Welcome to the thematic workshop of the uh, European Green Capital and Green Leaf Awards Network. I think the presentation will be shared uh, soon. Uh, I'll get, take the chance to share a few practicalities uh, with you before we start. Uh, my name is uh, Gwen van der Schee. Uh, I'm part of the Secretariat of the European Green Capital and Green Leaf Awards. And as you have seen on the agenda, there are uh, is a lot of information and um, and a lot of speakers. So we will try not to overload you with information, but be assured that we will uh, uh, share the presentation as well as the recordings afterwards so you can um, uh, read it uh, uh, afterwards and also a friendly note to the uh, speakers to res really respect your time slots because there are some of the speakers need to leave the the meeting before it ends so uh, uh, please respect your time slot and um, for the participants, uh, you can you have the chance to uh, ask your questions in the chat. Please um, also uh, write to who the question is addressed, and we will try to answer them in uh, during the meeting. And for all the questions that we ha don't have the time for. We will get back to you after the meetings to to answer your questions. So that's all for me for now, and I would like to give the word to uh, Francois Wackenert from the Commission to for, to welcome you. Yes. Good morning. Um, I hope that you can hear me. Um, there, the video should be on by now. Yes. So I hope that you can all uh, hear me and see me. Um, it's, of course, my pleasure 
um, to be with you this morning and to open this workshop. Um, from the EU perspective and from the Commission's uh, perspective in particular, we see urban work as an absolute priority and one that is going to continue to grow in the rest of the mandate of the Commission. And we very much welcome the fact that uh, more and more cities are engaging with us and are committed to the urban agenda. And we want to make more opportunities for cities to actually tap into the full potential of funding support that is available. We know about um, the opportunities that are available at EU level, but we also know that a number of cities do not always find the offer that is available to be easy to navigate through. And this is, of course, further complicated, if you like, by the fact that we've had a number of additional urban initiatives taken over the past uh, few months and years, which is extremely positive. But we also appreciate that we need to do more from our end to explain to you better what can be used and what can be applied for at EU level that will help you in achieving the objectives that uh, are linked to the European Green Deal, which is the overall framework within which we're operating. So I'm delighted to see that there are um, over 60 cities that are here with us this morning. And uh, what I'm very pleased about as well is that many of you are involved in several of the ongoing initiatives that we have at EU level. Many of you are of course familiar with the urban agenda and we'll have colleagues from DG Regio speak to that uh, later in the morning. Many of you have been involved in the uh, uh, LEAFS and um, Green Capital Awards uh, frameworks, and uh, we are also very pleased about that. But many of you are also um, following actively other processes that are um, more recent. Some of you have applied to the 100 uh, Climate Neutral Cities mission under Horizon Europe. Some of you are also involved in the European Bauhaus um, initiative that was launched by President von der Leyen at the beginning of her mandate. And we applaud you for that. We applaud you for your commitment to the full spectrum of urban initiatives that we have at the level of the Commission. Those initiatives are highly complementary. And what we want to demonstrate to you also during the course of uh, the workshop today is how the initiatives connect as regards funding opportunities linked to their implementation. And that will be one of the elements that we'll dwell on during the discussions. As I said, our priority is for you to have all possible access to the funds that are there and that can accelerate the transition to a clean, to a carbon neutral, to a zero pollution, to a nature rich environment at urban level. We know very much that cities are going to be, and already are of course, but will be even increasingly so, the game changers for the implementation of the European Green Deal. We know that the transformation that we require needs to start in cities and that many of your cities have already engaged the transition. And what we want to supply you with is the support that can make that effort even more successful and hopefully also faster and coherent with what neighboring cities and partner cities are also engaged in, because we very much believe in the value of exchanges among cities. And this is something that we want to stimulate through the funding that we can provide. You know that beyond the um, long-term EU budget, what we call the multi-annual financial framework, and you'll hear more about this during the court of the morning, We've also got exceptional sources of funding that are linked to the recovery and resilience facility. Those are, of course, channeled in the first place through the competent authorities, that is, the national authorities in the member states. But the objective is for this to serve citizens in Europe. And as many of our citizens are city dwellers, we need to ensure that this funding also responds to the needs that you have at the urban level. And that is something that will also be discussed during the course of the workshop. So what we want to do today is, well, very simple. We want to give you 
as much information as possible about opportunities that are out there that are available for you at this moment or will be available in the near future. In some of the areas that we're keen to see action um, taken on, what we've noticed in the past financial framework is that not all the opportunities that were out there were always seized. And this is something that we're also looking at very actively <laughs> because we want to ensure that you get access to the funding that is out there. And what we've seen is that more information is required, but also more active interaction between the local, regional, and national authorities will be essential for you to be in a position to maximize the opportunities that are available from the EU level. And as I said, we've seen from the number of participants today, over 60 cities, that this is of common interest to you all, and we welcome that. We hope you will get the information that you're looking for. We hope that you will get project ideas that will actually also allow you to take your work to the next step. And we want to feed in particular into the next network meeting that is planned in Grenoble in early June. And uh, we'd like to thank Grenoble for hosting the meeting in June. This will be an opportunity to have more such exchanges not just about the funding available, but about how you can make the best use of it, because you know better than we ever will at EU level what works for your citizens, what makes a difference, what is required at this point in time. So we very much see that, and that would be my last and key point, that this is very much a common endeavor. And we do not see this as a top-down mechanism where we tell you about the funding and then you know um, you apply, and this is a bit of a um, common and control approach from our side. No, we see this as a dialogue and as a process through which we can get to you with the best possible support for the projects that you see as most suited for the challenges that you face. And so the award secretariat, secretariat will guide you through in a moment also about that process based on the overview of funding, but with the broader perspective of how to make that funding suit your needs in the next phase. And so what we have in mind here is also for you to take an integrated approach, as we know many of you are already doing, but we wanna reinforce this in the next phase of implementation of our work, because this is very much the spirit of the European Green Deal. And I'll give you examples there. To become climate neutral, which is a crucial objective that we'll go um, deeper into later, a city needs, obviously, to work across policy areas and across sectors, from green transport to clean energy, but also looking at waste management and um, nature sites that can help mitigation, not just uh, relevant in terms of adaptation. So in a nutshell, all of this is interconnected. And what we see sometimes is that action at national level, regional level, and even at local level is not always as integrated as it needs to be. You are very often the best examples of integrated action, but I think that we can do even more at all levels of governance to improve the integrated action that we require. And as you know, we introduced the Green City Accord um, just, um, just a year and a half ago, the project is still in an early phase, but its purpose is precisely to help you in the journey to a green transition by acting across five core areas that will connect you to that integrated approach. And we believe that through that frame, you will be able to have clear objectives that will be measurable because this is based on three key indicators per policy area, which will manage the transition in a way that is objective, that you can measure progress on, and that your citizens can also see what you're achieving for them. So there's an accountability dimension, which we believe is crucial because as you know, at all levels of action, there's also a lot of talk about greening, but not always a translation of the talk into the full um, remit 
of ambition that is required. And that's what the tool provides you. So it's a safety net to also assure your constituency that you are delivering for them as much as you know you are, but you can document it in a way that will actually make that action even more recognized for the merits and the benefits it brings. So we believe that this is something that those of you who have not yet invested in, in terms of becoming signatories of the accord can maybe look at also in the context of the workshop as this is gonna be a benefit for your achievements and will provide you with more support mechanisms linked to the endeavors um, that will be committed under the Green City Accord. Now, we should look also at the integration with all the other initiatives that are out there. I've mentioned the 100 Cities Mission, I've mentioned Bauhaus, but there are many other initiatives that you are familiar with or even committed to. The Climate Pact is yet another one. So for the Commission, it is essential that we look at those initiatives with you in a way that will ensure implementation on the ground. We do not want to launch initiatives that are empty shells. We want to make sure that those initiatives directly help you with the efforts on the ground. And what's better than hearing from you directly as we will today about the needs that you have so that our initiatives can be even more tailored to those. And obviously with the Green Deal and its key strategies from climate neutrality to zero pollution, to circular economy, to biodiversity, we believe that we've provided with the overall set of ambition at EU level that will um, ensure that your priorities will also given a sense of um, prominence at the level of the competent authorities with which you will need to continue to interact nationally. There is a mandate at EU level, national authorities have to contribute to that mandate as much as possible. And that gives you leverage to also obtain the support that you require to ensure full coordination across local, regional and national level action in support of those priorities. So with this, I hope that today's session will give you inspiration, will give you practical tips, will give you clarity about what we can offer so that you can seize the full potential of the opportunities to invest in a greener future, which we're very much committed to from the side of the commission. So I wish you a very fruitful information session and I'm grateful to all of you from your level of commitment and your continued endeavors to make that transition happen on the ground for your citizens, for our cities, for Europe. Thank you and have a good day. For your, thank you, Francois, for your inspiring words. I would like to give the word to my colleague, Bas Gerritsen, who will give you a broad overview of the funding possibilities for cities. And, uh, and later, after uh, Bas Gerritsen's words, uh, we will dive deeper into a few of the programs. Yeah, thank you, Gwen, uh, for uh, giving me the word. Uh, for so far, uh, the time slots already is 10 minutes late, but I uh, keep uh, try to keep my uh, time uh, till uh, 10.30. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, Bas Gerritsen. I'm working as a, a spatial economist at Arcadis. Uh, and most of my work is about uh, subsidies for different projects in the Netherlands. Uh, I've been asked to uh, say something about the opportunities to uh, ask for fundings and tenders uh, for those specific subjects uh, number six, nine, and ten are uh, nature and biodiversity, climate change adaptation, and sustainable urban mobility. Uh, those are three of the, the 12 indicators that are central for the assessment and profiling of the award. Uh, of course, there are many uh, kinds of tenders and fundings, but uh, in this presentation, I'm only focusing on those three specific topics. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, uh, the, the purpose of subsidies. Uh, in my work, I often see that uh, uh, that that subsidies are uh, for the wrong uh, uh, 
Uh, in the market, we, we often see that subsidies are used for the wrong e economic or public developments or policy. Uh, what we see that a subsidy is normally a, a government insensitive for a form of financial aid or support extended by an economic sector with the aim of promoting economic, economic and social policy. Um, for example, and on the right side, and if you go to the next slide, uh, when we can see a red dot, uh, for something that uh, say the, the, UA, uh, the EU or the national government is interesting to uh, support uh, a policy, but also the market is interesting that specific topic, it is not useful to uh, promote or uh, uh, aid the specific sector because there's money to make for the, sp the specific market or business. So at the end, the market will uh, uh, will invest by themselves to again technologies or succeed in that specific topic. If it's not inter interesting for the uh, national government or AU or uh, what kind of uh, institution we will, which is providing the subsidy, it is also not interesting to uh, promote or give subsidies. What we are looking for is that that specific region that uh, that is interesting for the national government, but not yet for businesses. So, uh, for example, uh, culture, most of the time, it's very interesting for the uh, 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 for the social uh, policy and also for the for the people who are going through. But it's not that uh, that that the costs are gaining the, the benefits of that specific topic. So there is a, a margin, a top margin. So for those kind of reasons, that is interesting to uh, achieve of is to give uh, to promote with subsidies. Uh, and what we see is that for most European subsidies, EU, EU, EU countries themselves pay at least 50% of the subsidy. So it's not, not always 100% funded by an institution uh, who gave the, 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 uh, the subsidy. Uh, next slide. Uh, at the moment, the budget for the EU is still 2027, about 1800 mil, uh, billion, uh, billion euros. And of that 1800 billion euros, almost 373 euros is for natural resources and environment. Uh, what we see is that 95% uh, of the budget is fi financed by the member states themselves. And that the budget for the next generation AU is borrowed from the capital market. Uh, and most of the money uh, the AU gets is uh, a specific percentage of the Fed revenues, uh, the duties on imports of goods, uh, contribution paid of the amount of non-recycled plastic waste, and also the annual contribution who, uh, which are paid by the member states every year. Um, so as you can see, there's a lot of money and not always all the money is being used, but uh, there are a lot of opportunities for those fundings and there's also a lot of money available. Yes, next slide. Um, at the moment, and uh, there's a specific website uh, for the uh, subsidies, and that is tender fundings of the European Commission website. Uh, at the moment, there are 22 or this is a 20 European subsidy program for the period 21 27. Um, and those are uh, divided by calls and also for specific tenders. Uh, if we're looking at the most relevant programs for those three, sub, uh, uh, those three, uh, three specific topics from nature and biodiversity, sustainable urban mobility and climate change adaptation. There are two most relevant programs uh, which are arise in Europe and the program for environment and climate action uh, called LIFE. Uh, today is a special day and I also can see it in the, uh, in the next slide is that uh, uh, the, the program for LIFE and uh, there will be a next speaker who goes deeper into the details of this specific program. Uh, but the last queue is said that all live calls for the proposal 22 are expected to be published today. So if you go to the website today, you can see a lot of funding and tender opportunities, which will be going deeper into the uh, 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 opportunities for funding and tenders. So it's a quite uh, yeah, special day that it is also that uh, we give this uh, thematic workshop to you, but also after this presentation of the 12 o'clock, you can have a look on your own on the new funding and tenders. Uh, the LIFE program is one of the biggest programs, and uh, those uh, programs are about one to three million, so are quite big. Uh, till yesterday, there was one only call, and that is that uh, the program is helping you uh, with aiming fundings for specific uh, activities. Uh, 
that that project is still open. Uh, it closes on June 16. So uh, for specific cities, if you don't have the capacity and you want to uh, want to hire specialists to help you uh, uh, to get your aims or fundings for of the, to get your fundings for your uh, for your activities in your city, uh, there's still some time to write a proposal and to uh, ask for money or ask for a specific uh, subsidy. Uh, next slide. Uh, yeah, and some deadlines. Uh, you can you can see that most of the the concept notes for the new uh, projects are eight, September 8, 2022, and the full proposals have to be uh, filled in for uh, next year March. Uh, yes. The reason for this amount of, month of the these uh, the much amount of text is that uh, the slides will be uh, uh, will be uh, will be uh, uh, publicly. So that is the reason that there's a lot of uh, text on the slides. Uh, the program Horizon, it is uh, the biggest, uh, one of the biggest programs. It's almost 100 billion uh, euros. Uh, it's divided in uh, uh, different pillars. Uh, and one of the clusters we are interested in is, is the, the second pillar, Global Challenges in European Industrial Competitiveness, uh, with the cluster Climate, Energy and Mobility. Uh, and the program Horizon is specific uh, about innovation and technology. So it's a really research uh, uh, program. Uh, also to boost European innovation capacity, competitiveness and jobs, and also to deliver on citizen priorities and sustain our social economic model and value. So it's very about research and so not very um, uh, landscape uh, development or uh, a bit more on the technical side. Uh, the next slide. So uh, in the next slide, I have some calls. Uh, those are uh, already divided in some other uh, specific tenders, and those were uh, they are focused on one of the three uh, one of the three topics I already uh, mentioned. Uh, in the slides, there's a link uh, where you can uh, press on, and then you go to the specific tenders. So the first call is about safe, resilient transport and smart mobility services for passengers and good goods and goods, um, and they are quite interesting for you or maybe for the city. Uh, to uh, yeah, to have a look and to see what kind of, if you have matching plans that are already uh, available or uh, for fundings. Another one from Binnen the Rise in Europe is the Research and Innovation Action for Support Implementation of the Climate Neutral and Smart Cities Mission. Um, this is more about designing inclusive, safe, affordable, sustainable urban mobility. So especially for cities who are uh, making plans for how to get your city climate neutral. Uh, those fundings are very interesting, and they also just opened about three weeks ago, uh, and there's still plenty of time to uh, to write a proposal for before September 6th. Uh, next slide. And also one another for the Horizon uh, program is the coordination support for EU-funded urban mobility innovation. Uh, this one is more focused on what kind of different mobility uh, uh, ways are for your city. Um, especially for light electric vehicles. Uh, there are some quite interesting uh, subsidy programs. Um, it's yeah, for the Civitas 2030 program. Uh, next slide. Um, those were specific been the horizon, but also uh, more interesting tenders are opening soon. Uh, those are more for the life uh, program. Um, also, they are like underscored, so you can uh, press after the presentation on those links to get some more information about them. Uh, but these are more uh, for the, the specific topics of climate change adaptation and also uh, nature and biodiversity, because Horizon right now is more uh, focused on uh, sustain sustainable urban mobility. Uh, but also in the near future, there will be some more uh, fundings for uh, those other two uh, subjects. Uh, Okay, uh, next slide, please. Uh, there's also another program that is called Interregional Innovation Investments. Uh, this is something quite different because here the money is not going directly to the government or the institution who is uh, uh, asking for the fundings, but this money has to be invested in, uh, in companies. So uh, these uh, fundings are interesting for uh, startups, but they are too small to ask fundings for themselves or maybe in uh, municipality or other government uh, institution can help them with uh, uh, providing a funding. Uh, and they're also still open to October 18. 
uh, and this is more uh, specific of uh, more specific for the the green innovations uh, and this is also about uh, gaining uh, new technologies for uh, batteries uh, and that kind of uh, more technology technique uh, 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 developments uh, next slide then there are some other uh, possibilities to uh, to uh, to get subsidies, and that is one of the GPR Joint uh, Program uh, Initiative. Uh, this is especially interesting for the network uh, because in this uh, specific uh, call from the Sino European call, uh, there's a cooperation with uh, the National Institution of uh, National Nature Science Foundation of China. So in this uh, topic, and if we also go to the next slide, this is a uh, cooperation uh, of the two teams, uh, but this is a cooperation of uh, multiple European cities with uh, Chinese cities. So at least two uh, uh, European applic uh, applicants uh, has to be in call. So you need to cooperate, and especially within the network, you have a lot of uh, connections and already uh, knowing each other. So you can help uh, or participate in uh, in uh, asking for fundings, and also uh, some Chinese institutions has to be uh, cooperate. Uh, but also in the network, uh, there are a lot of opportunities to to help and to uh, to to make those connections uh, with China. So um, the I want to want to uh, the end of the small presentation, but that the benefits of the European Green Network are that uh, if you work together on different tenders and share experience of tender procedures to help each other out. Uh, and also what could be interesting is to make a log of fundings that were won to know which funding should be interesting for other cities. And also you have multiple times that you have to cooperate in tenders uh, where different cities must be involved of different uh, countries. So uh, as uh, Francois already mentioned in the introduction, uh, there are a lot of opportunities and uh, we think that the network can help each other out to, to, to ask for the money to, to help your city uh, grow, uh, to help the city uh, develop to a more climate neutral and also uh, help your city with uh, the, the future. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Bas, for your first overview of funding possibilities. Uh, we have one question in the chat from uh, Nyborg, the city of Nyborg. And uh, Karen Vestergaard asks, can you know if any of the calls with a deadline this year will be available next year? Yeah, what we see is that normally the, the, the six-year program is divided in two uh, terms. So we have 2021 to 2024 and 2020, uh, uh, 2025 to 2027. So it could be that uh, some opportunities or some fundings will be uh, possible for this year, but uh, can be changed for another period because time is catching up with technology. So uh, solar panels were uh, the beginning of this uh, uh, century. It was very interesting, but now we can see that you don't get much subsidy for uh, solar panels. So uh, it could be interesting. Uh, sometimes uh, the, the, the funding is uh, will be open again, but the, the terms uh, can be changed. Thank you, uh, Bas, for your answer. Uh, and also, thank you for uh, uh, gaining a little bit of time in the in the planning of this uh, meeting. Um, so I would like to give the word to the next speaker, which is uh, Nicola Robinson, who will explain you a bit more about the Horizon uh, Europe program, and uh, which she will be followed by uh, Martin Klekeler from the city of Hamburg, who will uh, explain uh, about, uh, give a little bit of explanation about their experience with this specific program. Nicola. Good morning. Uh, thank you, Gwen, and good morning, everyone. Um, so my name is Nicola Robinson. I'm from a small team in the Commission's Environment Directorate General, um, working to influence EU research funding uh, and to feed back to environmental policy, um, particularly on zero pollution open my curtain so you can see my face a bit better, on zero pollution, on biodiversity and circular economy, which are DGN's uh, three um, key strategic focuses. 
Um, I'm Scottish and Belgian. Um, I grew up in the Athens of the North, also known as the Reykjavik of the South. And I now live in the capital of Europe, which apparently is also known as the city of chicken eaters. Um, I discovered that this morning. But I dare say all your cities have, have great nicknames as well. I'm, uh, I've been asked to speak to you this morning about key aspects of Horizon Europe relevant to urban environmental research. Uh, and talk about uh, some of the open and forthcoming funding calls. Um, Bas uh, kindly covered some of these just now and his presentation had direct links, um, which will make your lives easier to, to look at these. Thanks. Um, I have slightly too many slides for 15 minutes, but I won't speak to all of them uh, and you'll all get the presentation afterwards to look at the details. Um, next slide, please. So Horizon Europe uh, has a budget of 95 billion euros. It's the EU's research and innovation programme um, that budgets for the current multi-annual financial framework of, of six years. Um, it supports top researchers, innovators and citizens. Um, it, it's not just uh, um, academic institutions, research institutions that can apply for it. Many of the calls are open to local authorities um, as well and to NGOs and other stakeholders. Um, as such, it's one of the, the big three EU funding programmes. Um, the cohesion, cohesion funds are worth over 400 billion euros, agriculture over 300, but research with 95 billion is, is, a, is a big chunk of, of funding. Uh, the LIFE programme for environment and climate action in comparison is, is worth 5 billion euros. So it's a, it's a smaller, more bottom-up project-based um, programme, which you'll hear about a bit later on this morning. But yes, Horizon Europe um, has been developed according to a vision, notably on tackling climate change, helping achieve the SDGs and boosting EU competitiveness and growth. Next slide, please. This is a bit of a terrifying slide. Um, it uh, shows exactly how Horizon Europe is structured, um, but let's not look at all of it. Let's look at the little bits I've just highlighted in red today, because that's the main parts that we uh, work on um, here in DG Environment, and the main parts of, of relevance to you, there will, there will be other areas as well I can't cover today, but um, we uh, work particularly closely on the clusters under Pillar 2 of Horizon Europe, particularly Cluster 6, um, where I've highlighted the word environment there. Um, this cluster is now co-chaired by DG Environment uh, with two other uh, Commission Directorate Generals with uh, RTD, Research and Innovation, and with AGRI. Um, and it's the main home of environmental research, particularly on biodiversity. Zero pollution um, is covered under Cluster 6 as well, but also under Cluster 5, Climate, Energy and Mobility, which has got um, air and noise emissions in its remit and is perhaps the most relevant to um, urban environmental research. Cluster 4 topics, uh, digital industry and space, um, less so space, um, unless you have uh, rocket launchers in your cities, but uh, is perhaps the most uh, relevant uh, to circular economy. Uh, and uh, digital aspects. Um, next slide, please. So under uh, Horizon Europe, a new, this is an innovation. Um, it, it, there are now five so-called EU missions. Um, they're a new concept and a major political priority um, intended to support uh, commission um, political goals, including the Green Deal. And they aim to combine um, research and invest, um, innovation with uh, new forms of governance and collaboration, as well as engaging citizens and stakeholders with eye-catching targets, in, including on zero pollution. Um, particularly the, the Ocean and Waters mission has, has taken wholesale the um, objectives for um, uh, many of the objectives for zero pollution biodiversity and put them in the EU mission. So it's giving it a greater political push and, and some more funding. All five of the missions are relevant to the environment um, and their research calls are, are included in the clusters I just described on the previous slide. Um, for implementation, um, different parts of the Commission are required to take ownership through, through their own policies and, and programmes to make links. So um, we make links with the LIFE programme to, to some of these missions, for example. Next slide, please. So I... Um, was particularly asked to talk to you today about the uh, mission on climate neutral smart cities, um, which you'll all probably be familiar with already. This morning there was actually also an info session on uh, the 
climate neutral smart cities uh, mission and the one research call that's coming up this year. Um, this will be available on YouTube. I can share the link in the um, uh, in the chat um, because obviously you're here now and not at that. So um, that, they'll give, that'll give a bit more detail um, about this year's work program for the climate neutral cities um, uh, research uh, portfolio. So this, I borrowed some of their slides here. I won't, I won't speak to them all, but um, this is why uh, why a mission on climate neutral smart cities um, and I perhaps focus particularly on the fourth bullet on the co-benefits which we have paid particular attention to. Bettina and I and DG Environment were involved in the city selection process and I looked at co-benefits, Bettina looked at, at smaller cities. We were looking at lower air noise, air and noise pollution, uh, less congestion, fewer road deaths, lovable and livable cities. Um, so uh, that's a, a slide that's come from, from the missions team in, in DG research I thought I'd share with you. And I've got a few more now. Go to the next slide, please. Um, so this was the main two objectives of, of the city's mission, um, to deliver at least 100 climate neutral and smart European cities by 2030 and ensure that these cities act as experimentation and in innovation hubs to put all European cities in a position to become climate neutral by 2050. I mean, it's perhaps worth explaining, this is not like uh, the uh, the green capitals, the green leaf, uh, the green city accord. In that, um, the city's mission is not rewarding already good performance, if you like. It was um, selecting cities that were ambitious and innovative uh, with regard to climate um, uh, and uh, digital um, smart innovation aspects. Um, uh, and it's also hoping to bring in other cities, um, twinning arrangements and networking. Um, so it's not just the 100 winners that, uh, that will uh, benefit from, from the mission. But next slide, please. <clears throat> Here is a map, which you may well have seen. Um, how, I don't know how many of you on this call uh, are among the lucky 100 um, that were selected last month. The announcement was made on the 28th of April. <clears throat> um, but there's, a, there's 100 EU cities and 12 cities um, from outside the EU that uh, that uh, succeeded um, in, the, uh, in the, mission, the, the selection process out of 377 which applied. So it was a victim of its own success slightly. Next slide, please. So the main elements of the mission, um, I wouldn't talk to all of this. Um, I'm going to talk particularly about the portfolio of R&I projects, research and innovation. Um, next slide, please. So this one shows last year's calls under the um, uh, the city's mission. So you can see, um, and these are closed now, but just, just so you see what kind of uh, aspects were covered. And we've got planning, transport, positive clean energy, um, and global cooperation and exchange um, were on, under last year's calls. This year, um, there's just one call um, currently open, which Vass uh, already mentioned. Um, I've got a couple more slides on that coming up. Um, on um, uh, inclusive, safe, affordable, and sustainable urban mobility. And perhaps a, in a further answer to, to Karen's question about whether the same topic will come up in the following year with research, that's um, not always the case. I mean, there is usually an implementation plan where they, they try to cover in the different years of the work program, different aspects. Um, transport and mobility has been an ongoing theme in EU research funding and it, and it will remain a big part of the mission. But for next year's um, calls, we're looking at having, a, a, I'll tell you a bit more, but a, a call on urban renaturing <clears throat> and biodiversity. Um, and there will be um, a follow up on the positive clean energy. So it's skipped a year, if you like. It was 2021 and 2023, the positive clean energy we'll come back with a, with a digital um, uh, focus um, that time. But for, for now, a little bit more on this, uh, on this urban mobility call. Next slide, please. So a deadline uh, 6th of September, it's an innovation action worth 42 million euros. Um, you can't apply for this unless you have a sustainable urban mobility plan. Uh, that was just uh, clarified. I attended the info session just before joining this meeting and then that was something they, they clarified. It has to be fully developed or in the preparatory phase. And, the project actions must be linked to that sump. Um, next slide, please. So there'll be four projects under this. Sorry, I skipped over that. So um, that's quite a good thing about these calls. It's not always just one project. It can uh, there, there can be several projects funded. 
And I wouldn't, I wouldn't read uh, this out either, but um, I mean, I was struck by the word unsafe, but so solutions for 10 um, areas of cities which are, have got um, transport safety challenges, perhaps using innovative planning, design and implementation approaches. Um, and, it, and it is really trying to be human centered, um, as it says on, on the next slide, please. Um, they are looking at specific mobility needs, women, children, people with disabilities, looking at people's um, uh, transport and mobility patterns, behaviours and habits. Um, and so there's a few more um, dreadful EU um, acronyms at the end, but uh, links to Civitas, SUMI, SUMP, ELTIS. Uh, I'd like to say I know what they all stand for, but uh, I do know SUMP now, that's Sustainable Urban Mobility Plans. Uh, and it's looking through for collaboration also with other other EU initiatives. Um, next slide, please. So I just wanted to say a few words about cluster six because that is our main focus here in DG Environment. And again, you might not think it's terribly helpful, but I'm, I'm going to show you some of the topics from the last two years, which are now closed. But just to give you an idea on drinking water, on uh, urban water runoff, um, on nitrogen, phosphorus, and then on urban food systems um, and social innovation and food sharing. So I'm on a circular economy um, uh, area. And then uh, there is a governance strand which was uh, looking at uh, citizen observations um, to, uh, to measure um, urban environment and boost uh, citizen engagement. So there's a quite, quite a breadth under, under cluster six and, and under the topics that are currently under discussion. So these are perhaps the most interest that would be open from next year. I think they'll be published at the end of this year. Um, there'll be more topics on water, drinking water, but um, also uh, water quality. Um, blue, uh, what do they call it? Blue green um, development, yeah. Uh, on a biodiversity, there's likely to be a project on light and noise um, and how it affects biodiversity. Uh, projects on rural urban governance, urban farming and, and urban food systems. Next slide, please. And um, lastly, this is something I did to prepare this presentation, and I recommend you do it or your funding colleagues um, uh, when you have a moment. Uh, go onto that website there, Funding Tenders Opportunities, and you can search um, for forthcoming or open calls. You could look at closed ones as well if you know, that's of interest, but I just plugged in forthcoming and open, and I put in the word urban, but you could put in uh, a word that's particularly relevant to an area that you or the university in your city is particularly uh, advanced in, but I found uh, 15 calls um, on on urban issues, including mobility and transport, soil and landscape, regional economic aviation, perhaps a bit specialised, um, and uh, yeah, even more specialised chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear and explosive threats. But um, I, you, it's probably too small to read there, but you'll get these slides afterwards and you can always go into that website and, and, and do the same exercise yourself. But on that first page, there's the Urban Freight Project that Bass mentioned. Uh, there's the um, Emission Project that I mentioned. There's a Civitas one, um, Decontamination and Reuse of Land. Next slide, please. So these were the other soil um, ones. Um, and one of the, some of these come from the Soil Mission, which is one of the other missions. Uh, and that is looking at urban um, land um, and landscapes. Um, uh, as well, so um, worth having a look at these and soil biodiversity. So this is just as a illustrative, um, you, you can find more projects uh, in more specific areas. I, I recommend that using these tools um, uh, to, to find projects of, of potential interest. I think I'm nearly at the end. What have we got next? Thank, thank you, Nicola. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for your very practical uh, uh, tips. Um, yeah, I think we're now going to hear from a, a practitioner, from, a, from Martin, about how he to tell us about how uh, Hamburg became an even cleverer city. Is that right? Thanks for your introduction, Nicola. I'm sure they were clever I'll give the word to Martin. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Uh, will you share my slides as well? Yeah. Ah, you do. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Martin Gretler, and I'm representing the city of Hamburg. Of course, you're extremely clever and perhaps even a bit cleverer after this project <laughs> I'm presenting to you. Um, at the moment, um, I'm talking to you from a tiny hotel room in Belgrade, which might be the explanation for why the internet connection is sometimes a bit unstable. I apologize for any inconveniences here, but this is already a big advantage that I can show to you uh, that lies in participating in a Horizon project. 
you get to know interesting cities like Belgrade, like I do at the moment. We have a partner meeting this afternoon here in the city. Okay, let's start. Um, I will well, try to provide a very brief inside view from how is it for a city like Hamburg to be part of the Horizon project. I have to say we are part of the uh, previous Horizon program, Horizon 2020, um, because our project started in 2018. But I guess the lessons are also um, adaptable or apl applicable if you're part of the Horizon Europe project. Um, just to for you to know, Hamburg is, is part in a lot of European projects, interact projects, connecting Europe um, facility and so on. Um, I will focus um, today on, on the Horizon um, uh, funding. And this was really i mean this is something that is comparatively new for us um because as you might know horizon projects originally were more directed towards the academic community of course and during the last years we've heard it in the beginning francois talked about it the um well, the scope of participants became wider and wider, uh, including NGOs and uh, public administrations, private actors. And so um, since a few years, Hamburg also participates as a city in Horizon projects. But this time, I think in uh, the project I will present to you now, next slide, please. That is Clever Cities. I have to do a little bit of promotion here as project coordinator. Uh, it was the first time that Hamburg was a lead partner uh, in, in uh, one of those projects. Why was that uh, a good thing? Because it is a city-centered project. So really trying to bring nature-based solutions into the cities. What does that mean? We try to use uh, natural processes to cope with a certain set of urban challenges. And the in the case of uh, Clever Cities, we are talking about areas in need of urban regeneration. Um, we define a set of urban challenges there, citizen safety, social cohesion, economic prosperity, health and well-being. And we try to, um, to use um, um, nature-based solutions, um, which means qualified green infrastructure, uh, to overcome these challenges. We try to create them in, in a very participative, participative way, so co-design, co-management, co-implementation is at the heart of Clever Cities. We have 33 partners, quite a big project from 10 countries. Belgrade is one of our fellow cities, that's why I'm here today. Um, we have cities, we have universities, we have NGOs, consultants, municipal networks, uh, ECLE is one of our uh, most important partners, definitely. Um, talking about co-creative design, uh, co-creative mo implementation monitoring. Um, so trying to go through all these steps of, of implementing nature-based solutions with the residents in order to uh, bring the life experience of people into these nature-based solutions. So this is what it's all about. We have urban test beds, living, we call it the Clever Living Air Labs. And um, yeah, this is what you have to know in order to understand the lessons or the experiences I would like to, to share with you. Next slide, please. Um, yeah, so some of them are obvious, uh, some of them are perhaps not, I'm not, I do not know how experienced you are with Horizon projects, the one, those of you who have been part of Horizon projects, this might be nothing new for you, but well, let's see. It's definitely for us as a city strengthening the city science interface. And what do I mean by this? Um, actually, Hamburg is in a quite advantageous position. Hamburg is a federal state in Germany. That means that uh, federal states in Germany, they are responsible also for higher education, uh, which means for the universities. But nevertheless, uh, on a daily basis, we do not like work with universities like the well, the exchange is not that close as you might think. And a project like Clever Cities helps us to really to get in like on a day-to-day -day basis, on a working basis, get in contact with our universities and other universities as well. Uh, and also it helps the universities to adapt their, uh, their work to the city's needs. So we have like, a, well, we try to, uh, to come closer in this project and this really works actually. Um, a project like Horizon is um, a very nice way to foster transversal collaboration within the city, within the public administration, um, and try to reveal synergies there. Let me explain. We had one case where we financed a heavy precipitation analysis 
uh, with the Clever Cities funding. So we have a pilot project area in the city and we had like uh, um, um, an external consultant providing this, uh, this analysis. And this was a very nice, let's say, crystallization point, point of departure for certain um, well, stakeholders within the city that never met in this, um, in this arena before. You might think, okay, of course, the, the Hamburg Water Supply, the Ministry of the Environment, the, the Hamburg Agency for Building and so on, they are, they are cooperating all the, all the time. Yes, they do. But nevertheless, there's, there's still a lot of, well, you know, boundaries between the sectors of, of, the, of, the, of public administration and, and Clever Cities helps to break these silos. And um, so in this case, this heavy precipitation analysis was a, was a very nice starting point for a discussion among certain actors in Hamburg. And now it's being replicated in other um, areas of the city. And we are very proud of this, this upscaling success. Let's put it like this. Um, I mentioned that Clever, uh, part of the Clever project are urban test beds, so pilot projects um, where you try to, uh, with a set of, of local stakeholders, test things. And I, you know, Horizon is a research project, so of course you should test and try and experiment with innovative solutions. And this is really interesting for public administration because it provides flexibility that you usually do not have because you're allowed also to fail. You're allowed to say, okay, this did not work out. So we have to think about another solution. We have to think about another project perhaps, or we de detected a research gap here. So all of this is okay with an Horizon project. And this is something that is very um, unusual for public administration, because you, usually you're not allowed to fail. You're, you're handling taxpayers' money, and you're, of course, you're, you are responsible to, to use that money uh, in, in a very transparent and responsible way. We are as well. But in our case, we are allowed to test things and to, yeah, to experiment a little bit. Um, I'm sorry, Martin, but that I um, interrupt your really interesting story, but I know that our next speaker is a little bit pressed for time. So, would okay. you be... <laughs> <laughs> I, Okay, I, I, I'll, I'll speed up a little bit. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, next point, Urban Data Hub. Hamburg has an Urban Data Hub. Well, could you shut, go back to the... Okay, yeah, exactly. Urban Data Hub. A project like Clever provides a lot of new data, and Hamburg wants to try uh, to keep uh, also the control to, um, about urban data and not let it all be in the hands of Google. So uh, a project like Clever can contribute to a strong data infrastructure, public data, uh, and this is what we try to strengthen also with Clever. And of course, we strengthen the link to other European cities. And of course, as a project leader, we have a direct channel to the European Commission, which can be very useful also. Next slide now, please. And this is already my last slide, so don't worry. Um, there are challenges and I, don't, I have to talk about them as well. You know, project development can be very, well, stressful, at least if you come very close to the deadline. It's a little bit like the fast and the furious versus urban bureaucracy. And in this situation, you need project officers that have a little bit of leeway for decisions. You cannot, you know, uh, communicate every tiny little aspect of, of, of a project budget to the highest political level. So in this moment, in this moment, you have to decide on a certain framework and you have to do it now and you have to do it within a week or something. So this is really important to have people that are that have a little bit of leeway in their actions here. Of course, there's capacity issues. Writing an horizon proposal is a lot of work. So you need dedicated partners. In our case, it has been the, the network uh, ECLE and um, Technalia, the Spanish consultant. So they've been of great help because we couldn't have done it on our own, definitely not. Stakeholder expectation management, Horizon will not solve all your problems. You cannot rebuild your, your city with an Horizon project. So it's more like do what you want to do anyway, but use Horizon to make it bigger, better, more shiny. So it's a little bit like the icing on the cake. The cake, you have already Horizon on top of it. Um, you have to think about long-term maintenance because of, of course we all know a project ends at some point. So embed your project activities in urban policies as a contributor, not a competitor, because for, in our case, it was, for example, in the beginning, people were hesitant and thought about, okay, are we now distracted from our actual work and now we are obliged to do this project? No, it should build up and, and contribute to your task that you wanted to do anyway. Um, 
of course, project versus urban policy time schedules can be a challenge. Um, Long-term engagement in, 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 in projects is a, a way to cope with that, um, to again and again be part of, of these projects and to continuously support your urban policies by, by European funded projects. It's very good if you have a city project or a city science officer that supports uh, other local authorities, other local uh, urban policy stakeholders, if they are afraid, especially if, they, if it's their first horizon project. So um, you, can, you can help to lower the transaction costs because at the, at the beginning it's a lot of learning and, and you know, budgeting, reporting and so on. So it's very good if you have someone dedicated to that to overcome these fears. And of course, um, to overcome all of this, Continuous networking, but I, I don't have to tell you this because you are already part of the European Green Capital Network. Engage in networks on market platforms, Euro cities, Italy, whatever you want. Um, but well, that's what, basically what I'm doing at the moment. Being here and saying, hey, Hamburg is a city that is keen on participating in those projects. So if you have a good idea, contact us at any time. So this is already what I wanted to tell you. This is next slide, please. This is already my final slide. So um, please contact us if you have a wonderful project idea or if you want to learn more about our project experience, uh, not only with Horizon, but also with other EU funding lines. Thanks a lot. Thank you, uh, Martin. And I will uh, keep it in mind, the Horizon is icing on the cake. I like the image. Um, I would like to propose to save your questions for Martin or Nicola uh to after our next speaker uh which is francesca etora who will uh speak to us about uh, the life program please go ahead francesca yeah hello good morning uh hope you can all uh, see and hear me uh, okay, so thanks a lot for uh, uh, this invitation. Uh, indeed, I'm Francesca Torre and I'm working uh, um, for the LIFE program uh, in CINEA, um, which is the um, European Executive Agency um, in charge of uh, implementing the, the program, uh, indeed. And I will uh, briefly uh, present to you um, the LIFE program and how it can um, how um, cities and local authorities uh, can benefit um, out of it, basically. Um, so if you can go to the next slide, please. Thanks. Um, so um, LIFE, for those who are not familiar with it, is an historical program uh, which exists since uh, 1992. Uh, so this year we are celebrating its uh, 30th, its 30th birthday. And um, it is the only uh, European program um, focused ex ex exclusively on uh, environment, uh, nature conservation and uh, climate change. And uh, with the new uh, programming period, so from 2021 to 2027, um, the um, life uh, has grown um, both in terms of uh, sites with a 5.4 uh, billion euro of uh, budget available uh, and scope um, because um, the it has gained a new um, sub programs um, focused on uh, clean energy transition. So for all those um, soft um, actions towards uh, uh, market uptake. Um, while the traditional uh, strengths sub programs are there and um, basically, uh, first of all, nature and biodiversity. So all actions in order to uh, alt and uh, reverse biodiversity loss. Um, a sub program focused on uh, circular economy and quality of life, what was called before uh, environment, um, which focuses on all actions towards uh, circular economy and waste, uh, air quality, uh, noise, water, um, chemicals, uh, um, urban environment as well. Um, and then uh, a third uh, traditional sub-program, which is dedicated to um, climate uh, mitigation and uh, adaptation action. Um, so, in, and in doing so, so uh, as you can see, um, LIFE program um, contributes 100% uh, to uh, the objectives uh, and targets of the uh, European Green Deal. Uh, next slide. 
Um, so uh, life founds different types of, uh, of activities and actions. Um, capacity building, for instance, has been already mentioned uh, before. Um, so today um, I will focus my presentation on two um, types of projects, which I think might uh, interest you. Um, one are the um, standard action projects, uh, which are um, considered to be the traditional projects for under life. Um, where the, the aim is to um, develop and demonstrate uh, um, innovative techniques uh, and methods um, which can also be um, close to market um, as well as to um, spread uh, best practices um, so um, techniques and technology solutions which are already available on the market but in order to get to be uh, fully spread and, uh, and deployed uh, but life also finance uh, um, actions towards uh, uh, projects towards uh, implementing um, EU um, uh, strategies and plans. And um, so this is the what we call the um, governance component. And um, standard action projects can get um, up to 60% um, of co-financing rate, uh, except for uh, some projects uh, uh, targeting uh, uh, priority and non-priority uh, habitats or species for which um, the grant can be um, extended up to um, 75%. And they uh, can have a maximum of 10 years of duration. Um, and the typical um, size in terms of the budget, uh, it's between um, 0 0.5 up to 5 million euro of EU requested contribution. Um, a different type of uh, projects um, are uh, the strategic integrated projects, um, which are um, bigger projects in terms of uh, um, sites, um, geographical uh, scope uh, and budget, and they specifically aim at the full implementation of certain uh, plans um, which are um, included, which are listed both in the call documents and the uh, multi-annual work program. Uh, they also aim to um, get different stakeholders involved and um, mobilizing also complementary uh, funding. Um, so again, uh, the co-financing rate is maximum 60%, um, but budgets are uh, larger. So the life grant um, range here is between 10 up to uh, 20 million euro, and the typical duration is between six and uh, 10 years. Um, can you go to the next slide, please? Okay, um, now I just want to give you um, an overview of, of the uh, projects that we typica typically found um, across the uh, different uh, uh, sub-programs. Um, so for instance, uh, um, in case of um, under nature uh, and biodiversity, um, uh, life uh, up to now, uh, um, at least uh, from 2014 up to 2020, uh, so the former uh, programming period has funded 16 um, projects um, under biodiversity um, focused on green and blue uh, infrastructure. Uh, so, um, and the aim is the development of um, nature-based uh, solution, um, which are somehow um, interconnected also to the other sub-program of life, which, uh, which, which is focused on climate change uh, adaptation. So as it, was, as it was mentioned before, life is very interconnected and sub-programs are really um, interlinked one with the other. Um, the main difference is that um, projects uh, under on green infrastructure under nature and biodiversity mainly refer to um, agricultural landscape, while um, climate adaptation projects uh, are more focused on, uh, on the urban context. Um, so next slide, please. Uh, um, uh, with reference to the sub-program um, Circular Economy uh, and Quality of Life, um, I would like to mention here um, two 
topics, uh, um, initiatives which are new to the program uh, and which indeed mirror the um, policy priorities uh, which were um, introduced uh, uh, at the beginning of, um, of the workshop. Um, indeed, one is the new um, Euro European uh, Bauhaus. Um, so um, we invite potential uh, interested applicants to submit a um, proposal um, in order to, um, to, to promote, to implement, implement this initiative. Um, and in particular, uh, proposals uh, focused on uh, the reduction of uh, environmental impacts uh, of new buildings, uh, um, as well as those that aim at developing uh, um, circular districts, uh, for instance, or um, maintaining or restoring uh, uh, biodiversity uh, by implementing biodiversity uh, friendly practice uh, for, um, as an example, the energetic isolation of buildings, uh, innovative architectural approaches, and so on. Um, so uh, the, the the life programs in the life program is uh, a, um, is a bottom up uh, um, as a bottom up approach. Uh, so uh, we uh, really look for um, ideas coming uh, um, from fr from the field. Um, and next slide. And the second one, uh, which I um, wanted to mention to you, um, is um, a topic which is included under the uh, sub topic on um, environmental governance uh, within the circular economy and quality of life sub program. Uh, and here, um, this uh, topic is, um, uh, focus, is uh, focuses precisely on implementing uh, um, national plans, uh, programs and initiatives. So you can see here all the, um, the lists. So national air pollution quality programs, air quality pro uh, plans, um, um, water man management plans, waste management plans. Uh, what is new is, um, are those highlighted in bold here. So circular economy action plans, uh, national red on action plans, uh, and uh, the uh, Green City Accord which was um, already presented uh, before. Uh, so across all, um, so again, here we welcome uh, proposals uh, from cities and uh, local authorities uh, targeting all the five um, key uh, areas uh, which, uh, which the Green City Accord is made of. Uh, and then uh, on climate change um, adaptation on, under the subprogram uh, climate change. Um, uh, again, uh, here uh, I just um, um, put a couple of, uh, of examples for you uh, of two um, life projects uh, which recently closed. Um, one is under climate change uh, adaptation, um, whose aim was to uh, foster the sustainability uh, in the building sector, in particular housing, um, by reducing the urban heat island effect. Uh, so the project developed uh, innovative roof tiles um, to control and reduce the energy requirement for cooling, uh, which is considered to be a major energy demand in air conditioning. Uh, and like this, they managed to reduce the um, energy consumption uh, of buildings up to 50%. Um, that, could I ask you to come to a conclusion because we are running behind schedule? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll try to keep it short. Uh, and then a uh, second example is on the um, sustainable mobility. Um, which is a, a project um, led by uh, a consortium of uh, uh, university which managed to implement uh, measures like uh, new bike and bus lanes uh, and uh, um, agreements with uh, local, local transport companies. And next slide. 
Yeah, here just to mention, uh, I won't go through them all, but just to mention the types of uh, um, national plans um, that are um, the, that are the focus of the uh, strategic projects. So the, the larger projects which I was uh, uh, mentioning to you. So you can see both the uh, the old one and the new uh, one highlighted in uh, in green here across the three uh, sub programs. So, so nature, environment, and climate climate action. Uh, next slide. Uh, and here I'm coming to a conclusion. Um, so with reference to uh, this year call, um, as it was said uh, before, indeed for the um, standard action projects, um, the, the call for uh, this year has been um, open today, published today. Uh, so you will see um, sooner or later in the funding and tender portal, um, the call uh, available um, throughout the, the three uh, Strengths, so SAPNAT, ENV, and CLIMA. Uh, you can see here the corresponding uh, budget available. And the submission deadline for this year is the 4th of October. And for um, the strategic projects, um, again, uh, there are three uh, different calls. Uh, but here the uh, application is two stage. So first we ask applicants to submit a, a concept note, uh, a 10 pages uh, um, project idea. And the deadline for this is next 8th of September. And then for those that are successful uh, and pass stage one, uh, we ask them to uh, submit the full proposal. Um, and the deadline uh, to do this is the uh, end of March 2023. Uh, all calls are published in the EU funding and tender portals. Can you go to the next slide? which is the last one. Yes, exactly. And here I put you, um, I included some um, links where you can find more information. So first of all, the live website, uh, the live questions and answers. Um, just to mention that um, as of tomorrow and up to the 20th of May, um, there is the live U info days. Um, which you are still um, invited to, to subscribe, uh, which provide um, a, an overview of all the sub programs and financial tips uh, and tricks and how to write a successful proposal. Um, if you skip it, you can still have the chance to follow uh, National Life Info Days. Um, if you want to have a look at the type of projects that life uh, uh, finance, you can have a look at the life project database. And if you still have some question, you can uh, write us um, through the functional mailbox, uh, which uh, I, I wrote it here. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, uh, Francesca. And thank you also for uh, addressing uh, the information uh, where, where where the uh, participants could find additional information. Um, as I've been saying, we are running behind the schedule and we really want to respect the end time uh, this morning at 12. But still, I would like to give you the chance to uh, uh, have uh, urgent questions, either on live or on Horizon. I don't see any uh, of them in the chat right now. So I um, propose just to, to, to go ahead and to sacrifice our little break of five minutes. I'm sorry for that, but I think it's important that we uh, keep the, um, the ending time um, at 12. So therefore I want to invite the, the next speaker, which is George Huben to talk about the Smart City Marketplace. Yes, hello, good morning. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me. So we just go ahead with the next slide, I guess. So um, just let me quickly introduce myself. I'm Gia Kuhn from DG Energy. I'm responsible for three uh, local initiatives, if you want, uh, one of which is the Covenant of Mayors, which is not subject to today's uh, intervention, but is uh, the uh, biggest um, initiative of its kind worldwide with uh, nearly 11,000 cities subscribing to it. Uh, I'm also responsible for the Covenant of Companies, a new pilot initiative and the same sort of remit, but for companies. And 
Our subject to today's short intervention is the Smart Cities Marketplace, the third one I'm responsible for. Next slide, please. I guess that the next slides are sort of, I wouldn't say obsolete, but much of that has already been said. So uh, I just, this is to emphasize that cities are really important to deliver the Green Deal, that um, they represent 75% uh, of a growing share of the youth population, and therefore are essential to achieve our climate goals and uh, energy targets um, uh, by 2030 or respectively by 2050. Next slide, please. I skipped those a bit quicker. That one we can actually also skip because all of that has already been said. Next slide, please. You will have that afterwards. Another slide which has already been sort of uh, uh, mentioned. We have here two, two big um, chunks, of course, the European Green Deal, which is important as, an, uh, as a policy framework, especially for cities or also relying on cities. And the mission on climate neutral and smart cities, you just saw uh, the detailed introduction to it. And the 1.8 trillion euro of investment have already been mentioned by another colleague. So uh, this is also just uh, uh, putting it uh, together in a very short slide. Please go ahead with the next one. Thank you. So here we go. This is actually a, a core slide, at least from the perspective of smart cities and communities, a program which was launched in 2012. Uh, in the form of an innovation partnership, and it has connections to, to many, many, many other uh, parts of the EU landscape. Uh, you see on the bottom, uh, on the top right, you see, of course, the marketplace, uh, which serves a bit as a facilitator when it comes to financing. I will come to that later on. But we also have the Covenant of Mayors, we have Civitas, which is uh, an initiative uh, uh, which is run by our MOVE colleagues. We have a Living in EU, which is on digitalization and um, uh, fostering the digital transition in cities. Um, then we have uh, on, on, the, on the bottom left, we have uh, what is meanwhile called scalable cities. This is the secretariat being in charge of all the 18 lighthouse projects we delivered as triggered by the innovation partnership. And the smart cities marketplace uh, in a nutshell is effectively the successor of what used to be the marketplace of this innovation partnership. Um, next slide, please. Um, I mentioned the Lighthouse projects. Much of that, much of the DNA of these Lighthouse projects um, uh, went into the design and the making of the mission on climate neutral and smart cities. We have 18 of those projects, uh, which demonstrated uh, 550 smart city solutions across Europe uh, in more than 180 sites. So quite a massive program involving 120 cities, uh, 48 lighthouse cities, and 76 fellow and observer cities. Um, a budget of 430 million has been spent on that, and we really see that as an asset to build on um, also and especially in the frame of, of the mission, which was just mentioned. Uh, many of those cities are signatories to the Covenant of Mayors, and, and quite a number of those already are taking part in other programs. So it, it's quite a, an essential and very representative share of cities really driving the urban transition. Next slide, please. I'm now coming to the Smart Cities Marketplace. Next slide, please. Um, and here you see the very structure of the marketplace. The core process is really the explore, shape, deal matchmaking process. Um, in a nutshell, what it does is actually providing key knowledge, um, absolute pivotal knowledge to pick up solutions which worked, um, to shape them further to a stage where they can uh, be pitched to uh, investors in the deal stage. So it's really all about um, making this uh, transition we, we all need um, happening with the help of private investments. Looking at the very landscape of, of funding and, and financing, since this event is more concentrating on funding, it is also evident that funding will not solve the absolute challenge of making Europe climate neutral by 2050. We need to build on private investments, uh, on public investments as well, of course. And so, what the marketplace does is actually going exactly in that, uh, uh, in that gap uh, area and uh, trying to create a movement, uh, uh, a growing number of uh, solutions which are implemented 
uh, with solid business models, uh, a solid risk assessment so that investors can really get into the process, get their buy-in. And by running this process, we also increase uh, the knowledge base, um, the evidence, um, how things work, and, and this way really make it work. Um, next slide, please. As you see, I'm not going much into detail because the time is short. Um, we have foreseen so-called targeted activities. Um, these activities will um, uh, switch, turn, uh, tweak the matchmaking process in order to collaborate much closer with some selected initiatives. You see the renovation wave, you see the covenant of mayors and covenant of companies, but you also see the Horizon Europe mission on climate neutral and smart cities. We know that 100 cities have uh, been selected by now, but there is a number of cities, 277 to be most concrete, or uh, uh, 265, um, which have not been selected or which are not part of the program. And I guess that we also need to get those cities on board and, and help them realizing what they applied for. So they have applied with a decent plan and, and we want to help them realizing that also with financing. And then there was the mentioned Civitas, of course. And then you see in the second wave, we have the European Bauhaus, which was mentioned already, but we also have JPI Urban Europe or respectively, um, the uh, um, Horizon Europe initiative uh, run by the same team, which is the urban, uh, Driving Urban Transitions uh, a Partnership. Uh, we have the European City Facility, which is specializing on energy efficiency, um, Living in EU, specializing on digital, and the Celsius Initiative, specializing on district heating and cooling. Um, next slide, please. This is just a summary of the added value um, of the Smart Cities Marketplace, especially with view to the new phase we are going to start in July. Um, there's a number of new items on the agenda for the Marketplace, um, also as a twice as much budget for four years uh, uh, of operation. So there's a lot to be expected and the expectations are high. And I would invite you all, of course, to get involved and, and have a look uh, at the Marketplace's offerings and, and to really see what's in there for you. It's totally open. There is no restriction as to uh, as concerns, uh, technologies or entities. We really want to make it a 360 degree approach for consortia of cities, companies, investors, whatsoever. And I'm very happy to answer questions on that one. Um, next slide, please. Yeah, this is uh, once again, a bit of a summary of the actual Explore Shape deal process, how it works, what it does, and also some uh, uh, short info on the evidence. We have so far matched 130 projects at a magnitude of 600 million uh, euro. Um, um, and we, of course, want to do more and, and um, uh, not only more in terms of scale, but also more in terms of involving especially small and mid-sized cities, because these are mostly affected um, and um, have the biggest lack of capacity when it comes to actually doing a leap forward when it comes to climate neutrality. And I think that was my last slide. If you advance to the next one. So thank you for your attention. That was a very quick run, even a rush, I might, I might say. Um, if you have any questions, uh, get in touch or I'm still available for a few minutes, I guess, to answer questions if needed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Georg, also for uh, strictly respecting your time slot, really. Uh... Good. Um, if I look at the chat, I don't see any questions for you right now. I imagine that the um, participants are um, digesting your uh, the information uh, still. So, uh, and as there is mentioned in the chat, if you have any questions coming up after this meeting don't hesitate to contact uh, the speakers directly and if you don't have the contact information please address uh, us uh, at the secretariat and our email address is mentioned in the chat so please don't hesitate and then i would like to give the floor to our next speaker thomas de betun indeed thank you and, and it's good i'm just speaking after georg because actually he spoke about smart cities and I will speak about sustainable urban development and which is the really uh, other complementing dimension of the way uh, at the commission we are working uh, towards uh, the, the cities. I will speak to you about the cohesion policy, which is the uh, most important in terms of volume budget of the European Union 
which aims at reducing inequalities between territories and which has a particular important focus on urban and cities. And that's why uh, I suppose I was asked today to, to, to join your meeting. And I want to start directly by going into the current programming period, the 21-27 programming period within the multiannual financial framework, which has a, a strong urban dimension, where actually 8% of the funds that are allocated uh, within the European Regional Development Fund, which correspond to around 15 billion euros, has to be directed towards integrated territorial development strategies that are focusing on urban areas, which is uh, uh, directly managed by uh, cities, or at least that the projects can be selected uh, by cities themselves. It is an important dimension of the cohesion policy, which we are promoting uh, extensively and which also could focus on the different challenges uh, of cities and in particular attention should be given to the green and digital transition into functional urban areas. Actually, um, in the different policy objective of the cohesion policy, there is a new policy objective, an important one, uh, which is called a Europe closer to citizens. And this cross-cutting territorial policy objective is for uh, supporting the integrated and sustainable development of urban areas and the other territories. And it addresses the diverse interlinked territorial and local needs and challenges. And it has a wide coverage of thematic areas foreseen under this objective to allow territories to build own policy mix of measures to address their local challenges. Actually, the 8% I just mentioned before has to be spent by managing authorities along the different policy objectives. There is policy objective one to five. Uh, policy objective five is the one which is specifically dedicated to the integrated uh, approach and with the specific territorial tools. We are currently in the programming of the uh, cohesion policy. The programs are submitted for the moment by the managing authorities with already the identification of the territorial needs, which means that for you, cities, who want to get your projects, your transition projects financed, it is the right moment. If you have not yet done it, I hope you have, uh, to enter into a negotiation with your managing authorities on getting funds for your projects. But one of the conditions that you will find, next slide please, in the regulation to do so, is that if you want to develop integrated territorial development within your areas, there is a number of minimum requirements. And I just wanted to say that these requirements are there to operationalize the cohesion policy, support to integrated territorial development. It's within the regulation. It's called in the article 29 of the common provision regulations. And these are the core of the support provided by the policy and are cumulative conditions. I will not get into the details of them, but if you want to know more and get and also accompany it in the development of the um, strategies underpinning these key requirements, there is an handbook that we developed, which could help you to look at good examples, but also methods to develop these strategies along these key requirements. And the link is here below. You will have it and the presentation will be shared uh, for sure uh, after this meeting. Next slide, please. What about the uh, green dimension through sustainable, uh, their, um, sustainable urban development within cohesion policy? Uh, with the new regulation in place for the cohesion policy funds uh, for 21-27, an important focus has been placed on supporting the green transition in all regions in Europe. And there are several important provisions to have in mind when it comes to how cities and regions can be supported for their green investment. The first one is the concentration of the funding and on objectives contributing to climate adaptation and mitigation that represent a high proportion, 30% of ERDF, European Regional Development Fund, and 37% of the Cohesion Fund um, that should be on climate objectives. We have also planned a dedicated objective, which covers for a wide range of possible areas of support, promoting clean and fair energy transition, green and blue investment, the circular economy, climate change, mitigation and adaptation, risk prevention and management. And a few of these areas in particular are flagging urban areas in particular. However, these uh, investments can be declined in all types of territories. There is possibility offered to have targeted territorial approach for this investment. 
based on the needs identified, whether through the policy objective five I just mentioned with the policy mix or through policy objective two, which is the uh, greener Europe objective, uh, not, uh, I would say, territorially sensitive in its definition, but in the programming should be. Next slide, please. To help cities along this path, we have developed uh, a new initiative um, or initiatives, actually, uh, I will be followed by Urbat for program. Marceline is here, I saw her. Um, these are uh, technical assistance support towards um, cities. First of all, uh, it is the support for innovative actions, experimentation, testing new solutions to urban challenges, and uh, spreading the innovation along cities. You might have heard about these uh, innovative actions calls during the 1420 programming period. For the 2127 programming period, that will continue. And there will be most probably already a call by the end of this year on the new European Bauhaus uh, within the innovative actions. So that's an, an important uh, feature for you. But we will also accompany these uh, innovative actions by other uh, activities on capacity and knowledge building, territorial impact assessment, policy development, and communication, which means that. Uh, we will continue with what was called the urban development network, peer learning and capitalization between cities that are benefiting from structural funds, but also broader than that. The overall budget of this, uh, of this initiative is around 450 million. Uh, wait a second, please. I was interrupted in the middle of my presentation. So this, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Sorry for that. Um, the the, the complement of these innovative actions was is, is on the capacity and knowledge uh, building, territorial impact assessment, policy development, and communication. Um, this initiative will be complemented, as I mentioned, by Urbat 4, which is uh, uh, which will be presented to you in a second. Next slide, please. On another initiative is the uh, intergovernmental initiative of the Urban Agenda for the EU, which aims at improving regulation, knowledge, and funding for cities at the EU level. Uh, this initiative, uh, this. Um, uh, intergovernmental initiative you might have already heard um, is uh, has been implemented through 14 thematic partnerships gathering 326 partners and mainly cities and maybe some of you have been part of the of these thematic partnerships to develop concrete actions to improve the visibility of cities at the eu level the new phase uh, is launched with four team, four new teams with two new teams that will and that are currently ex ante assessed and will be uh, launched through um, a specific uh, partnership on greening cities and sustainable tourism. We will call for partners most probably to take part into this uh, partnership by um, the summer 2022, so next summer, and uh, will be decided on the composition of this partnership by the end of this year. And next year, we will have new partnerships, most probably to be launched, to be still decided, but uh, if it is next year or later, on food and inclusive city dimension. Um, it is rather important for, for you if you have specific experience in this uh, field and definitely on greening cities to contribute and maybe to apply to be part of this partnership, which will take two to three years and which we, which we really look like on how to improve the EU regulation and help other cities in Europe uh, to, uh, to uh, use good practices. If you want to know more about this, there is a newsletter specifically dedicated to the urban agenda for the EU and a brochure, uh, which describe in detail and the link will be here uh, on the presentation as well. Next slide, please. Finally, few events to come before the summer and after. Uh, there is a new European Bauhaus early June uh, for those that are interested to participate. The Urbac City Festival, I'm sure definitely Marcelin Bono will, uh, will, will speak about it. The World Urban Forum in Katowice in Poland under the UN auspices from the 26th to the 30th of June. 
the European Commission with several DG will participate there. I, I hope to, to meet some of, of you there and, and the Green Capital definitely uh, on some uh, events. And we have a European track within these events, which will uh, present the different uh, um, uh, dimension of the uh, urban policy within the EU. At the, um, in September, there will be a first G7, which gathers together the most developed countries' ministerial meeting on urban matters. That will be the occasion to extend, I would say, our EU approach towards urban development. In particular, if you have heard about it, the new Leipzig Charter, which is our common framework for urban policy, common meaning between the uh, EU institution, member states, and cities. And I can also already tell you that early 2023, we have the Cities Forum, uh, which is planned, and you will definitely hear soon about that, and we will invite all active cities in Europe to take part of it, followed by uh, the Green Urban Event during the Swedish Presidency that will also be planned in June 2023. We do not have yet details of this event, but you will definitely have to uh, note that into your agenda for next year. Thank you. That's it for me. Thank you, Thomas. Um, I don't see any questions for you right now in the chat. So uh, thank you again. And then we'll move on to our next and last speaker, Marceline Bono, who will speak about Urbect. Go ahead, Marceline. Thank you very much, Gwen. And thank you very much also, Thomas, for intro already introducing the framework for the um, UBACT and especially UBACT 4 program. Um, we've talked, uh, I just want to stress that indeed we've just talked about the cohesion policy, in particular policy objective five, and we've heard a lot about uh, integrated urban development this morning, about learning and exchange and possibilities for cities to um, benefit from each other's experience, as well as uh, the importance of bottom-up approaches in designing uh, program projects and here you will see networks so uh, i hope uh, this uh, the urban program also give you some ideas of the opportunities you can uh, use and benefit from in order to to work on, on these uh, key, key issues I've, I've just summarized so can we move to the next slide please next slide um, so I just want to stress also as a disclaimer that now I'm going to give you an overview of the UBAC program, the way it's been so far. Um, Thomas provided an overview of the way UBAC 4 will look like, but the, the details uh, are not public yet. So um, UBAC won't change much uh, in what I'm going to introduce to you now, but some uh, details or some precisions that you might ask in the questions might be further defined uh, later on. So um, next slide, please. So just in a nutshell, the UBAC program is a European co territorial cooperation program. It's co-funded by um, ERDF and member states. Um, it's existed uh, for uh, almost 20 years. It's funded uh, around a thousand cities, um, part of 162 networks. Its main objective is to promote integrated sustainable urban development while targeting um, various uh, stakeholders from city administrations, city staff, policy makers, decision makers, practitioners, elected representatives. These are the direct targets of uh, the activities, but a range of other local stakeholders are concerned by the activities within Urbact and can benefit from what the networks have to offer. Next slide, please. So what does the program um, offer? So what's really key at the heart of the Urbact program is the Urbact method which is composed of these, the elements which are presented here on the slide. So it's about integrated approach, participatory approach, transnational exchange and uh, uh, expertise, thematic expertise, which then enables cities to really have hands-on uh, work on sustainable urban development. The integrated approach, um, we've talked a lot about it already this morning, uh, and within Urbact, it covers five areas ranging from horizontal to vertical integration, multi-level governance, regional integration, um, working with a different range of stakeholders, as well as um, benefiting from different kinds of um, funding opportunities, combining hard and uh, soft uh, infrastructures. 
participation is really about involving uh, local stakeholders with the creation of dedicated working groups at local level um, to design uh, relevant, adequate local policies. Transnational exchanges take various forms. I'll come back to that in a second. And expertise is customized, um, is tailored expertise for uh, all networks. The three main kinds of activities that uh, Urbact carries out are um, the, uh, can you click on the slide, uh, transnational networks. Uh, there are different forms, uh, sub-networks, which are the action planning networks where all cities are uh, coming together to learn and exchange on the experience um, on a given topic that they all want to address. Um, the uh, and other for another format which will be um, carried out in the uh, which has been carried out and will be continued as well is uh, a good practice that transfers its own experience um, in a modular way to other cities and this will also be um, implemented in relation to the UIA um, Finnish projects as part of uh, EUI as well. Um, capacity building, so the Urbac program provides lots of uh, activities to train uh, um, practitioners within city administrations uh, as part of networks, but also as publicly available on its website. It takes the form of city festivals, universities, campuses, online activities, webinars, publications, the Urbac toolbox, and all these you can find online. And the last point is about capitalization, dissemination. It's really thematic and transversal analysis of um, what's happened uh, within Urbac networks and in co uh, collaboration with the other programs and initiatives as well. And once again, it takes the form of public, uh, publication webinars, uh, online courses, and you can also hear more uh, from this uh, at conferences and uh, at city festivals. Um, next slide, please. So if you join, what can you get? Uh, so learning and exchange from your peers across Europe. Uh, please just click because I just popping one after the other. You can experiment some activities at local level. You, you get enhanced capacities for policy making. You can access financial resources and I'll come back to that in conclusion as well. And uh, you get um, strong knowledge and expertise from um, your peers, from uh, the stakeholders you work with, as well as experts um, working directly with you on your projects. So the next slide is a bit complex, just to let you know that when you join a network, you get support from the secretariat. You work directly with an expert who's, who helps you in um, exchanging and learning uh, with, your, um, with your partners city partners, you also work directly with um, your uh, stakeholders uh, at local level. You can also get access to other kinds of expertise with uh, on thematic ad hoc needs, and you also get um, uh, support from experts working directly with the secretariat. So there is a range of, uh, and I've, I hope I, I'm being really quick, but uh, I hope you understand that there is a range of support that you can benefit once you join a network. Just to show you a couple of examples of networks which have been funded on the on, uh, topics of interest today. So there have been networks um, actually being also finalized right now uh, on uh, related to energy um, and to climate change um, adaptation. So uh, networks focusing, the Urban Pact has focused, is focusing on um, designing local policies for zero energy cities, then carbon cities, um, zero carbon cities is focusing on the implementation of uh, SECAP. Villawatt uh, is actually transferring a UIA practice of a complex and holistic approach to energy uh, consumption to other cities. Space for People and Reconnect um, uh, are working on the issue of uh, mobility, sustainable mobility and urban um, and public space. BPathNet is working on bees protection within cities as well as bee uh, byproducts and, and use of bees as a touristic um, asset as well. And health and green space, uh, so you can make the link in between the green spaces and um, the health um, added value. 
I'm being extremely quick. I'm happy to answer questions uh, and or provide you with more details afterwards, but you can obviously find all the information, all the learnings from these networks on uh, the Urbac website. So just to let you know as a final slide um, that you can uh, get ready for the first call from the next um, uh, uh, action planning networks, which should be launched around October or by the end of the year at least. Uh, this means you'll get the opportunity to team up with other cities on a topic <coughs> that you will choose. Uh, we, as mentioned before as well, this is also bottom up. So you, there is no, the call is open. There is no frame uh, or um, guided topics that you should cover. Uh, so it can be definitely on uh, mobility, um, uh, climate and uh, biodiversity. Um, we have the Urbac City Festival in, in June in Pantin. Unfortunately, registrations are closed. Maybe some of you have already registered and will come. I'll be happy to see you there, but also um, all that will be shared there will be available afterwards. And just the last thing I wanted to share with you is that um, it's not on the slides. I'll share that with, that with you on the chat. Uh, Urbac has just launched as part of its toolbox um, uh, um, some specific tools and guidance in order to to, learn, to design funding um, opportunities and strategies and to look for the most adequate uh, funding opportunities that you can get right now in the, in the realm of um, EU opportunities. So I think it's also a nice add, add on to, to what we uh, heard this morning. So thank you very much. Sorry to have been so quick and I'm available for any question. Thank you very much, uh, Marceline. Um... I don't see any questions for you right now in the in the chat, but maybe uh, uh, some of the participants will have some uh, afterwards. They know where to find you, I guess, and otherwise uh, you, uh, people can contact the Secretariat of the European Green Capital and Green Leaf, and we will forward any questions that are relevant to Marceline or any of the other speakers uh, that have uh, spoken to us this morning. Uh, I really want to thank uh, the speakers for sharing their uh, information and also thank you for the participants. Um, I'm afraid we did, uh, we have overloaded you with information somehow. So uh, hopefully you um, uh, have the time now to digest all the information and to see what aspects of the information are relevant to you and to your city. And I want to remind you that um, in our, our upcoming network meeting in Grenoble uh, in uh, 2 and uh, 3 June, um, we will have uh, create opportunities to, to, to find each other and to, to form partnerships uh, uh, for these kind of uh, funding programs that are, we addressed this uh, morning. Um, maybe to um, uh, also, I would like to also invite you to fill in our ev evaluation form of this uh, event uh, he, that will be coming up uh, uh, after this, the next slide. Uh, so we, we can um, uh, improve the next uh, of these kinds of uh, meetings. And of course, as we were telling you, we will share the presentations as well as the um, uh, recordings of this meeting of this morning. So you can uh, look at them again and, and, and click on all the links, links that are included in these um, presentations. Um, I, oh, I look at the, the, the chat box for the last time and I see um, Martin asking if there already an agenda for Grenoble. There is, but I don't think we have already shared it with the network that will be coming up soon. Martin, I'll assure you we are working on it. And um, I, that's, I think that's all the questions that I see um, uh, in the chat. So thank you again and see, hope to see you next time.